In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. All those things. We answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners just like you. And the way we open the episode is with our introductory portion. This is where we mention our sponsors, where we talk about uh, current events. Uh, we talk about our lives. So I'm going to give you the breakdown of this entire episode. We started by talking about how hot it was here in the Bay Area. Sweltering yeah. hot. I think Justin called it ball hot. It was very, very hot very outside. Very sweaty ball. Now, he did leave a drink in his car uh, while we were working all day in the, in the hot sun. But then he went out to check his drink, and it was still cold. How is this possible? Magic. He had a Mir cup. Now, Mir makes good-looking insulated cups that keep your beverages hot or cold magically. It's not magic. It's actually science, but it yeah. seems like magic. I, Anyhow, I like magic better. We have a discount for you. If you go to mirror.com, that's M-I-I-R.com forward slash mind pump, use the code mind pump, get 25% off your entire first order. Then we talked about two behemoths in the gym industry, Gold's Gym and 24-Hour Fitness, Closing down facilities. Gold's Gym actually went bankrupt. I know they filed for that. Um, mm. And they fired people in not so cool ways. Pretty cold. Then we talked about Starbucks. 15,000 locations. They're closing 400, but they're going to be moving to delivery uh, instead or pickup and delivery. Uh, then we talked about spot reduction, the myth of spot reduction. Justin brought up some enlightening fun facts about Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, oh, everybody good, wants to know those. Feel good stuff. Then we talked about Apple's valuation, $1.5 trillion. Isn't that insane? Then we talked about vitamin D and deficiency and its link to coronavirus symptoms. Now, here's the thing. If your vitamin D is low, supplementing with vitamin D is a very effective way to bring it up. However, if your vitamin D levels are good, supplementing with vitamin D is not a good idea. How do you know where your vitamin D levels are? Well, you can either go to the doctor, um, ask them for an order to the lab, go get your blood drawn, do the whole thing. Or you could stay at home, go on everlywell.com. That's E-V-E-R-L-Y-W-E-L-L.com. Use the code MINDPUMP and get 15% off a vitamin D test delivered right to your door. It comes to your door, take the test, mail it back. Then you can find out if you need to take vitamin D or not. Then we talked about a study done on identical twins, vegan versus omnivore. Kind of interesting. Justin brought up some more science stuff about ass squatches. <laughs> yeah. What? Then we talked about Bill and Ted, the new Bill and Ted coming out. We're excited about that. Then we talked about how people are trying to get Paw Patrol canceled. What is wrong with you What's guys? What's happening? It's a cartoon. Leave it alone. Yeah. Then we got into the fitness questions. The first question, this person has trouble activating their chest with bench presses and dumbbell presses. What can they do? Next question. This person wants to improve strength endurance. So this is the ability to do high reps uh, but maintain your strength. And they also want to know which MAPS workout uh, is best for this. MAPS HIT is on sale. It's 50% off this month. Um, that's a great program, by the way, if you like strength endurance. The next question. This person wants to know if they're too old to get into powerlifting. And then the final question. Never. They, they want to know how we would advise someone with body dysmorphia um, what kind of advice we have for them. Um, also, this month, I had mentioned this earlier, MAPS HIT is 50% off. So HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. Now, our HIT program is different because it uses weights. You're going to build strength along with burning a ton of calories. This means as you get leaner, you don't lose any muscle. One of the drawbacks of burning tons of calories or programs that burn tons of calories is sometimes the body tries to adapt by losing muscle. In other words, your metabolism actually slows down. Not with proper high-intensity interval training. At least not the way MAPS does it. So again, this program is 50% off. It comes with everything you need to follow the workout, including video demos and workout blueprints. Here's how you get the 50% off. Go to mapshit.com, M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com, and use the code HIT50. That's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. Hey, speaking of hot, it is hot. We finally hit our little hot our heat wave. Dude, I've been at the pool the last two days. I know. Dude, it's blazing no, out. Notice my uh, color. Oh, yeah. Uh, what are you doing? Are you sitting out getting... Uh, is your pool open Captain in your area? Captain Tan. No, well, my um, my uh, my sister-in-law has one, so we take Max over there when it's been getting... We've been getting introducing him to the pool. I want to get him swimming. I'm trying to get him dude, swim lessons soon. Friends with pools is, like, magical. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. own a pool. You, you have to know a friends. friend with yeah. a pool. Dude, yeah, you are looking a little dark. Thank you. Yeah, Justin looks the same. I, yeah. 
I mean, I, just, just I, mean, I, I burn. I, I stay white. I <laughs> burn. Two, I stay two white. two colors, white or red. Now, when I, it, I might gain a few freckles, though. When it when it gets really hot, do you have to put shoes on your on your bulldogs when you go in for a walk? <laughs> shoes on my. You know what I mean? You ever seen that with dogs? They put uh, little booties on. Yeah. You know, not where I live. So I live in a really nice, like shaded area, lots of trees. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, Otherwise, you would have to. If have, it was like yeah, on, I don't know. I've on never, asphalt or whatever. They, they're uh, uh, paw uh, paws are pretty um, durable. Mm. If that's the word I'm looking but for. But they get yeah. hot. Little- I don't know. Yeah, like uh, even like some beaches where the sand gets like blazing hot. I've seen my dog run and then just like freak out because it's so hot. Like so they they feel it. What do you do? Just just dip I, their feet I in the laugh water. At him. I mean, he runs <laughs> wow, to the pool. Wow. What, <laughs> what do you mean? What, what a bad person. That's, I know. Well, phone right. call. I'll from, go pick him up. You know, like, phone call for Peta coming. Hey, Here it comes. Hey, it's it's, it's funny to watch because he's like ah oh, wow wow because I'm feeling the same thing. I'm not wearing shoes. Mm. Anyways, but you deal with it. Their paws are way yeah, more yeah, resilient yeah. than our our bottom or our feet are. Our feet are supposed to be resilient. It's supposed yeah. to be, but we don't. We don't. We're not like dogs where we walk around with no shoes on all the time. No, we yeah. baby the hell out of our feet. You ever mm. seen pictures of a uh, of hunter gatherer feet? Mm. It doesn't look like ours. Mm. No, their foot's like wide. The toes are spread out, and on the bottom of their foot, it looks like they have a sole made yeah. out of you know foot skin. Dude, speaking of blazing heat, have you guys ever left like okay, you've left the protein shaker in the car before oh, in the blazing that's heat? The worst, dude. I just I, I left, thank God, like I left my uh, cold brew in the car and I was like, "Oh my god, it's going to be f- like fucking hot as hell." And it was in one of those mirror uh one of the canisters and it was like perfectly cold and chilled still. What is the weird science that they're using for that? Cuz I've done that too. It's all almost like day. It, no. literally a whole day. I just I couldn't believe it. it, and dude, it's it's just speaks to the quality of of the product. I mean, I can, I don't really know like the insulation that the technology they use for that, but was it's it, on point. Was it while you were here with us? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. The protein cup one. That that because you open so, that, that's like opening up a demon smell. Oh, I that's have the worst. Okay, thing no, there. wait. I have a. I'm not. I'm not going to share it with you guys now because we're we on Friday. We shoot our Friday fitness tips, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So each of us, you know, come with you know four or five. One of mine is how to avoid that. How to avoid the the protein cup stink stink afterwards? Yeah, I have a t- gold tip. What do you do? I'm not going to tell you. You have oh. to wait. You have to wait for my Friday put fitness a, tip. Put a well, I want to try it out now. I want to put a protein shake in there and then see if we can leave it in the heat and also you open it. You can. Doesn't. So it, what's great? I mean, I, I don't understand the the technology that allows it to do this, but it, it, it can it, whether it's hot or cold, it'll keep whatever it is that temperature. That's what's fascinating to me. It's like yeah. it'll it'll keep it super hot. So if you have something that's warm and you want us to keep warm, it'll well, keep all it, warm it is all is it's a it's so there's there's two walls in between there's air in between that's all so they create a space and that doesn't transfer don't energy. ruin the magic no I think well. there's an air conditioner in there yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's little guys yeah. just fanning it yes that's yeah. what I that's, that's what, what I that's, I, I, that's, that's what I picture yeah. fucking mirror amazing <laughs> yeah amazing Dude, magical I, uh, shout out to you guys I cleared out uh, a gym one time with the protein uh, shaker cup that I left in the car oh I literally it's the worst I was this is when I was managing uh, I can't wait to share my it, tip it, it competes with the protein fart that clears the room. It's worse. This is when I managed the 24 on uh, Santa Teresa. I went outside to my car to get my gym bag. was going to work out. And I, you know, you, you, I leave my gym bag open sometimes. So when I turn or whatever, something will come out. Mm-hmm. So I noticed in the corner of my trunk, oh, there's my shaker cup. I've been looking for that. And I brought it inside, Uh-oh. opened it as I was walking into the gym. And it was the, it was the worst thing ever. My whole front desk area left, and we had to open the front door. My tip, threw the my tip is going to guarantee that never happens to people again. It's that good. So much anticipation. Yeah. What, what do you, what do you, do you sprinkle some lime? I'm not going to tell you. you know, no, it's like the most, it's so easy. You put cologne? Nope. Yeah, nope. Yeah. nope. Yeah, a little, Wash it right after. Now, are you, uh, are you the, all right, now, are you guys the, the type that, that tries to, Salvage that, or do you toss? No, it? I throw it in the trash, oh, dude. Bro, I shot. feel like Sal would try and salvage it. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, would. it's in his no. name. It's Sal- out. No, I wouldn't. I throw it away, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Spe- salvage your Sal. Speaking of twenty-four hour fitness, oh boy, oh, shit, dude. dude, you would think that somebody called this. It's. <laughs> It's a weird we should downward laugh. This is not actually. This is not funny. No, no this is terrible. No, this no. is not. Fu- it's not funny. It's incredibly uh, distasteful. It's disappointing. Oh, they they fired people. Let them go. However you want to. Which say. okay, you might have to do that. That's not the. That's not necessarily yeah. the distasteful. Oh, that was, that part. was in it. That was no. inevitable. Although I will say this, right? So you have obviously two total different ways of leadership here. You have Mastroff and UFC. 
what was their email? They sent out an email. Their direction is it is what it is. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be limited to how many people we can let in. So instead of getting rid of our team and our staff, we're gonna try and move this ship in the direction of a more boutique like gym. Mm -hmm. Rates are just gonna raise have the to, prices. Yeah, raise the prices and and and, and pr try and provide more services. Keep everybody. And then twenty four hour fitness. No, no word of raising any prices, but we're just going to cut heads. They let go of people. So I got so many DMs. And yesterday. this is the part that to me is just terrible. Yeah. The, the, so many uh, GMs, FMs, trainers, uh, group X instructors, DMs, like all levels. Like they just, they chopped heads. And the way they did it was on a, a, a recording. So you got, so you woke up so one day. So disrespectful. Oh, imagine. And I, I got DMs from people that 18 years. Seven years, ten years in the company. Oh my god! They get a message that's a, a recorded message of of letting you go because, and that just tells you how many people they had to let go, right? Because yeah, right. if it was just a hand, and, and that by I the way, I don't give a fuck, man. Twenty four is not reporting how many; they're not sharing that. So I, I don't care how many, man. You call, you get on the phone, and you tell them yourself. Yeah. You Pussy. It must have been yeah. a lot, though, right? Oh, oh I'm sure. I know. I'm sure I'm, it was, but especially, still, especially you don't make a recording for this 20 is people. business. This is how you do business. You know, you have to have that personal touch. Otherwise, you know, what are you even doing? They well, also they well, also ignored people when they when they kept getting charged and uh, you know membership dues when they first cut you know closed. They're going to kill their brand completely. By so the way I shooting people. I shared that article then this uh, yesterday or this morning. One of the it was last night or this morning. I shared that article and now already I'm getting DMs from uh, people that are saying, "Well, I don't know if that's worse or what happened to me at Golds." So uh, Golds filing for bankruptcy and closing down tons of gyms. And some of the people that worked at these gyms, the way they found out they no longer had a job was they got the same generic email that everybody who was a member of that gym got, which is this gym is closing down, no longer there. So that was like how they found out they no longer had a job. Wow. What's worse, an email wow. or a voice or, or a recorded message? Uh, both are pretty impersonal. Yeah, yeah pretty, yeah. pretty. Bad. Hello, impersonal. this is eh, from so and so. Yeah. We are informing you, you yeah. no longer. So have we a job. see. Do we, not have to come in to. So we see what's forever. happening to CrossFit. We see what's happening to uh, UFC crunch type boxes. Mm -hmm, we right. see now what's happening to 24. We have a close friend, uh, Scott, who we talk to on a regular basis on the private gym. What's going on with them? The last one that we haven't seen yet. We haven't seen Orange Theory. Orange Theory and F45. I don't, I, I don't see how happening? they're, I don't, they're, they're, they their were business, the ones that that would be hurt the most. Their business model is even harder to maintain with the current regulations and stuff well, well was it this friday that was supposed to be the grand opening of all gyms like you know here oh, especially right? in california yeah that's what i thought i thought i read that yeah that, that was like the well the your santa cruz date. your santa cruz gym opened up yeah, just yesterday finished, which is great I'm, i hope they do well i think these these smaller boxes these private gyms are going to do better because i've gotten messages from people who are like yeah my gym is open it's not one of these big box, big brand gyms, mm -hmm. and but it's open and nobody cares. They're not following anything. They're just coming in and working out. Yeah, I've heard that. And, and I think that's easier to do with a with a smaller company. Sure. I, I really do think that the yeah. way that the gym industry is going to look for a little while is you either pay a lot of money or you're going to work out at home. I don't see the twenty dollar a month model surviving. No, not for long. No, no, that that's all old news. There's yeah. no way you can pull it off. Even. I don't know, dude. But Planet Fitness, I haven't heard anything from them yet. Yes, that, I'm interested in. in I mean, their... they're they're the example of the 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 biggest box for the cheapest price, right? Nobody beats that. Nobody beats ten dollars a month and has the square footage that they have. So. I wonder if they're just yeah. charging people in the same. Those people don't don't know because like, they didn't know before. Prices stay the same, but pizza rates went up. <laughs> A <laughs> hundred dollars a slice. <laughs> like, oh man, you're, you're driving a hard bargain here. But I'm totally gonna buy it anyway. Well, you don't so, even know you just get taxed later on. The next, <laughs> next one. Like seventy five dollars. What happened? Yeah. Oh yeah, three slices. No, actually. no, free pizza. Each pepperoni, really fifteen dollars though. Yeah. Yeah. The the here's some more good news. Apparently, uh, okay, S Starbucks hmm. shutting down four hundred locations. Whoa, did you guys see this? Starbucks. No. Yeah, Starbucks is shutting. No, Justin's about to start crying right now. No. Yeah. Oh, not my Starbucks. Yeah, dude, they they are shutting down 400 locations. And, and now, how many total were they up to? They were in the thousands. I know. Yeah, that. I don't know. They're up there. They're yeah. like every street corner. So it says here in the article to close 400 stores uh, while expanding its pickup store concept and access to curbside pickup. So we're going to see more. So of they're these. just kind of shifting and rearranging. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. Should have bought stock in Dutch Brothers. That would have been a good call right on this Who's time. Who's that? That's the coffee place that does their, they do the drive through thing. They're uh, like the most popular. Oh, really? Drive yeah, yeah. Is a See good if they're call. publicly traded, Doug. Could you look that yeah. up for us? See if Dutch Brothers is a, a publicly Well, you know what I'm While disappointed you're at it, in? Google Dutch Oven. Why no, not? don't <laughs> Google that. Yes. <laughs> or the, add sound effects. And then just click anything. images right hey, away. Hey, I listened to um I listened to your interview the other day, Doug. Pretty good job. All oh, right. Well, thank you. Yeah, I thought it was really good. It was very interesting. You're on the next it level was podcast. More interesting than listening to Justin and Sal. Yeah, no. you actually yeah. probably learned more about me that way than you do talking to me. Yeah, no, mm. I, yeah, I did. I, I thought it was really good. Actually, you told. I think you told the origin story better than any of us tell it. I think. Oh, really? Okay. I think for now on, when we get interviewed, we'll just yeah, we'll just refer to Doug. <laughs> refer to Doug, <laughs> yeah. please. He tells the story better. He does. Back yeah. in the good old days, he cleared up some things that I think I tell wrong in my story all the time. What do you it, say wrong? Well, I I always still picture Doug in that in the first no the first, he wasn't there the first conversation yeah no no I'm, I, I'm happy you picture me there but I, you were in my heart yes thank mm. you yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. no I went I, I went home and I called Doug that after that meeting yeah so it was just the three of us mm -hmm. huh? no yeah. it was us uh, three oh, and, and, Craig. and Craig oh Craig was at that one yes he yeah. was he was correct yeah at your house I don't feel like he was yes he was he was uh huh it mm. was me, you, uh, Justin, and Craig, and then Katrina was in the background. Mm -hmm. I don't remember Craig being yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, Doug was so buff, I got the two of them mixed up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that, that's you kind of confused happened. the two of us. You see, uh, those videos I'm posting of Doug from our workout six, seven years ago are yeah. just flying in I the know. forum. Yeah. It's looking shredded. Yeah. So many did you see those? Ladies. I did see those. I was going, wow, I look kind of good then. Yeah. <laughs> you still look good. I Yeah. I just need to drop a couple percentage of body fat uh, it's it's heavy time right now yeah, it is i mean i've announced it as heavy time <laughs> someone made a comment on your video oh dude look like you ate the whole bag of chips <laughs> 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 that sounds bulking over there as long yeah. as i'm the least fat yeah. husky, <laughs> of the, of us, i'm, I'm yeah. okay yeah. the problem is you guys keep raising the bar <laughs> hey, man. So, i can't have you beating that role you know for me so. what's up doug a couple things so dutch brothers coffee is privately held oh, okay no good and then starbucks in the united states has 15,149 locations. Wow, so 15,000 locations. Did you guys get the DM? I forget. I, I want to say it was Marlon who sent it to me. I can't remember. I think it was Marlon. Uh, sent me, uh, it, sh it showed this, um, of all fast food chains, Starbucks, uh, Subway was included in this, Burger King, all, uh, Pizza Hut. And it was like a graph of like from uh, inception and then like which ones had the most locations. Would you get, what do you guys think it is? Of all, of all of fast food places? Yeah, of all fast Subway. food. Subway. Yeah, Subway is that. way up there. Yeah. yeah. I know. I, 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 did I not, only knew that because I saw it. Yeah. Okay. So you did see the same thing. I did yeah. not know that. That was a surprise to me. Subway has the most locations. Yeah. Yes. They have the worst sandwiches. It's the worst. <laughs> it's a you bread know sandwich. Meat comes out of a tube. It's gross. And they it's slice just, it off a tube. It's just bread. There's yeah. never anything else in there. I know. It's, it's gross. Well, yeah. Well, we just uh, speaking of Pizza Hut, though, did you know that they're the they actually had delivered up to the space station? Like the one, the one of the only companies that have delivered food up to the what? space station. They yes. No way. Yes. No, they didn't. Yes, and it cost like millions something dollars. It was like ridiculous. What? Where did you read? Google this? it. Yes. No, I read that. I you mean, read such better articles. It's, it's than like Sal. such like 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 Snapple cap like useless fucking facts. But that was one of them. I was like, what, dude? Did like, you guys ever see the? They ordered pizza and they they uh, rocketed it up. Did you ever see <laughs> the the rare uh, or the one on one of a kind Pizza Hut sneakers? No. Yes. Oh wait. Yeah, I do remember that. I think you we showed us. That up on yeah, the show you, you like ago. push a button on your. Oh my god, look at that. Yep. They. Oh, in two thousand one, Pizza Hut became the first restaurant chain to deliver to space. Yeah. Wow. It happened. How yeah. long did it take, though? Pizza guy. <laughs> yeah. Was it warm? <laughs> I'm sure it tasted great. Uh, sure, yeah. I doubt it. How do uh, they How do they poop in space? That just made me think about that right now. Because uh, pizza makes in their me poop. Suit. Is that what they do? I it's probably know. like a like a vacuum toilet. Yeah. It sucks the- It probably yeah. compresses it and then- yeah, I would just gotta watch out; it doesn't slip out. You know, that starts floating disgusting. around. Disgusting, dude! Yeah. I got I, somebody did a, a a post on Instagram that hella people are tagging me on because mm. it sounds smart, but it's actually not. It's this trainer who's talking about how spot reduction is, uh, you know, actually real or whatever. And he goes, "If spot reduction isn't real, then why are the forearms?" Here, I'll read it to you. What if I make a statement saying spot reduction is possible? Ever wondered why your forearms are the leanest body part? So I guess this theory is because we use our hands a lot that our forearms always stay lean. Yeah. That's so dumb. What if I told you the <laughs> earth was not round? Yeah. So here okay, so here's why your forearms 
Here's why you don't see humans who store a ton of fat in their arms and legs. We store body fat in evolutionarily advantageous ways. Yeah. So could you imagine being a hunter and you gain body fat and just your arms and legs got fat and you're trying to chase down some <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's also why men Well there's not a lot to protect and insulate there either. Well yes, also. But, yeah, like but it, you don't got no organs going on but there. But it also nothing. makes you less mobile. So you'll notice like men store more body fat in their midsection and that's because it keeps our limbs free to maintain our ability to hunt. Wow. Why do women store more body fat in their lower body? Because it keeps their center of gravity for when they are pregnant. Because uh, if they store body fat and they got pregnant in their belly, that would be that would make them very, up, you know, uh, top, top over, top over, yeah. right? So this is why your mm. forearms are lean. Here's, otherwise, otherwise, all you teenage boys out there would have our shredded <laughs> right Jack forearm. Over. I yeah. don't know why this reminds me of it, but here's two fun facts about Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, wow, yeah, keep them rolling. Today. So no, okay. Did you know that he actually fed his neighbors sandwiches and? They're speculating that he definitely put like human oh, meat in no. the, the sandwiches. Why? Where did you hear this? Yeah, no, I heard it. And and oh, I think my skin. <laughs> yeah, the, how angry would you a be? Couple oh. the, a couple of the neighbors were just like, "Oh my god, I'm pretty sure it." Like I ate human. <laughs> oh, the worst part was like a year before that they were bragging. Man, I miss Jeff. Remember when he yeah, made those Jeff killer? Jeff make these great grilled cheese with like a <laughs> like bologna. <laughs> 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 that was somebody's ass. Yeah. Oh. You know, oh, uh, another fun fact about so he was repulsed by uh, people that had tattoos. So it, he said it tasted different somehow. Really? Oh. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, I'm going to get all tatted up, man. A ton of now. ink in you, I imagine That's so. The, right? this, the sandwich thing is disgusting, man. Oh, that, I know, man. Hey, Jeff, can you make that, that po' boy sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little foot long yeah. there. Oh, uh, that's a foot? No! Du double me, please. Made with real boy. Oh, my oh, God. Hey, delicious. Bro, bro. Hey, uh, Apple, dude, 1.5 yeah. trillion. What what about that? What, That's is that they're what they're at? worth now? Remember, it was like it was just not it even. It was a, a race to the yeah, cash. It was a race to a trillion. That yeah. was a big deal, just to hit a trillion. They're already at one point five now. You mean valuation or how much cash? How they much have? cash they got? How much money they got, bro? Oh, they were the first to become. They were first to hit a trillion, and they just were. They just rolled past one point five. How many people? They are, are their own country. Hold on a second. How many people on the earth are there? Seven billion, right? Seven billion people. So, if you took one point five trillion dollars and divide it by seven billion people. How much money would everybody get? Mm. I have no idea. You can have fun with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, tune, I'm good tune over in, here. Tune in to next episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> where we, to be continued. Where we figure that out. Holy cow. No, it's in market value, Adam. Oh. Not in the bank. <laughs> oh my god! Like, that, the, ra the race was the race was to be worth a, a trillion. Yes, that's market value. Well, that, that was the rate. What the race was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the race see, is so. If they had one point five trillion in the bank. That'd be insane. Well, how much? How, yeah. See how, what see what their what their cash value. What, 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 what's their cash value at? They're like up, how much they they're, they're, they yeah, have a up, lot. They have the most. I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But a trillion cash. What would you earn in interest in that? <laughs> Hundreds of billions oh of dollars my a year. God. Yeah, last time your, your math is way the fuck off. No, guy. it's not. Here they got two hundred and seven billion dollars uh, in cash that's on hand. A lot. That's a lot. That's way less than one point five trillion. Well, that's still a, a the, lot. Yeah. Well, the the race wasn't to how much cash they had. Mm -hmm. the, the the big race was the first company to be worth a trillion dollars. Now who's next? Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, I think they wanted to be. I, I think, think they beat them out. Huh? I think Amazon passed. See what see what Amazon Amazon's at, Doug. Right? Amazon I feel like they're a trillion already too. I'm yeah. Sure. That's a, that's pretty crazy. So it was to get to a trillion. Now they're already at one point five. That's what's cow. fascinating. Was it, it took a it took a long time for someone to cross over the trillion mark, and for them to be already at one point five is is amazing. What's after a trillion, by the way? Is it in a Google quad? Something. No, no. I thought I thought. What's the number after a trillion? Does anybody know? No, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't thought that a big. zillion. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Googleplex. Yeah. No, because I, I I know what a, a Google is supposed to be one with ten zeros, right? Uh. Isn't that what that is? Nobody knows. Yeah. I just count to 12 and I train my clients. So Amazon hit a trillion in February. Oh, see, okay. So uh, they're they're right behind them. Wow. Uh, yeah, Doug, can you find out what's after a trillion? I am doing that, yes. Yeah, yeah so let's yeah. see. Uh, it comes quadrillion, quintillion, see? Quadrillion. sextillion, septillion, octillion. Wow. Wow. It keeps going up. So quadrillion? That sounds like you made that shit up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sounds like somebody. Justin. Just, Justin guessed that, didn't I you? I did. Yeah. 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 You didn't give him credit or anything. You, it's you, fine. You, yeah. You're such a cocksucker sometimes. So, <laughs> wow. Dude. Sorry about that. Trying to shit on everybody else's hey, facts and then yes. come with none yourself. Come on, guy. I just My leave bet. it out there. Yeah. See, a zillion is not a number. 
Adam. <laughs> yeah, Sorry to break yeah, that down yeah, for you. No <laughs> zillion. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, should dude, be. dude. So uh, this, you know, I know that, that nobody wants to talk about this anymore, but coronavirus is still around. Um, <laughs> so they're they're really connecting six hundred pound gorilla. They're really connecting um, low vitamin D levels to uh, to corona to people getting infected with coronavirus. And ironically, we told everyone to stay in their houses. I know, dude. But the, so the study came out that showed that people who were vitamin D deficient mm-hmm. before the pandemic began. Were seventy seven percent more likely wow. to test positive for COVID nineteen compared to people now, who had normal. In levels. that in that article, did they also mention how many cases of like pure COVID death, like like what that they were deficient in in vitamin D? Because I I, I think I read somewhere where the most cases they found were like it, like accelerated the symptoms, like they were low in vitamin. Well, D. I don't now I don't think that's that surprising of a stat. What's this? What's the stat on the? How many people are deficient in vitamin D anyways? It's well, like eighty percent of the population know, anyways. So to say eighty percent of the population is is vitamin D deficient, and then you're seventy percent more likely to get the coronavirus if you have a, that's not much of a connection you're making there. No, 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 no. They actually did. They actually did control for a lot of factors. So they found people who were not deficient and people who were deficient, and then they found I mean, it's not eighty percent. There is a large it's, amount. I think it is. It's high, dude. Yeah, there's a lot, but it's not eighty percent. But it is high. It is very high. Doug, look this up. This is a fact day today. Today is fact checking each other day. What yeah. is the stat? How on? many Americans are deficient in it, vitamin D? Yes. But here's or what's what percent? Here's what's important though. You also have to communicate. If you're not deficient in vitamin D, supplementing with vitamin D is not a good idea. It's yeah. a fat soluble vitamin, mm-hmm. and having too much of it's not good for you either. Too much vitamin D causes calcium to build up in your blood and your system. Mm-hmm. Can cause heart 40, issues. Forty two percent. Yes, it's half of eighty. That's still a lot. <laughs> it is a lot, though. Yeah, it's still a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Yeah. So uh, now here's what I recommend. I recommend if you're if you want to make sure that you're because vitamin D is very important for immune yeah. function. Dose obviously. matters. Yeah. Make sure that your vitamin D levels are either good or low or high before you decide to supplement. Um, you can get a test from your doctor. You can ask for a vitamin T, uh, D test from your doctor, or, which can be a pain in the ass, or you could just do one at home. Um, the company we work with is Everlywell. So I've done the test now three separate times. Mm-hmm. And um, luckily for me, each time I'm, I'm right this in the middle. This is why well, I- the next one I'm really focused on. You haven't done, you only did one once, Yeah, right? I did. I did one before. Uh, this was like months and months ago, but like, and I was deficient back then. And I've been actively trying to up that, especially after all that information came out and like trying to, you know, make sure that I'm, I'm, you know, doing my part to, to be resilient towards these diseases out there. So it, this is why I love this company too. I went to, so I, I have a, a full blood plan all scheduled right now. Mm. Four weeks, dude. What do you mean? Four weeks to get me in. Really? Yes. Oh, Ridiculous, wow. dude. And not only that, because we got the new insurance that my doctor wants to do a, like a full exam on me first before he even schedules the blood test. And then it's four weeks for me to even get in and see like that. Mm. Ridiculous. Now, did you tell him about all that's the STDs crazy. and stuff that you have? Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to surprise that's, him. That's going to be even more <laughs> weeks. He's just going to find yeah. out? Yeah, yeah. It's always a great like- yeah. The test came back. First time yeah. opener. Looks like your warts and have I, herpes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then I act hella shocked. What? Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So the vitamin T D That's test. That's more penicillin. The, yeah. the, the, <laughs> last time it was six. They have to. They have to they're going to give you COVID to cure you. Yeah. The the yeah, uh, here's a dash of crabs. The vitamin D <laughs> test that you order from Everly Well. The retail price is only seventy nine bucks. So seventy nine bucks, you get a test at home. And then I know with Mind Pump we have a discount. So. Using our code, so that's very inexpensive for an at-home test, and you get the results pretty quick. Yeah. So, are you supplementing now that with vitamin D, Justin? Is that yeah, what you're doing? I am. Yeah. How many IU's are you taking every day? Uh, tell me like a good range. Five thousand. Because I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're normally Courtney, Courtney manages. They're normally twenty five hundred, uh, twenty five hundred IU, five thousand IU are the the standard uh, pills. Unless you do like a thousand, that's mixed with something else. Yeah, yeah. I, I take uh, five. I take about five. I to, take ten. To, to, you take because yeah, yours were really low. Yeah, I was well, thinking I, like five. I was thinking five thousand IU's, and I actually tested with the Everywell test and still came up low. Mm-hmm. So then I I I take ten, and I so. I won't though if I have like a great day like or like the last three days I haven't taken that high I haven't taken that high of a dose because I've been getting tons of sun. You're d- you are darker, yeah. Thank like you. really dark. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's good. Mm. So I, I got a cool article for you guys. Uh, identical <laughs> twins. I had a joke, but I won't. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's keep going. Identical twins uh, 
compared a vegan diet with an omnivore diet. So both of them followed uh, diets that were different and they're identical twins. You guys want to hear the results? Mm. Yes. So the vegan diet resulted in more fat loss, probably because it was lower calorie, obviously, but also lost some muscle mass. Mm. The omnivore diet guy uh, didn't lose as much body fat, but uh, maintained or gained a little bit of muscle. Want to, want to know one of the main side effects of the of the vegan diet twin? Mm. Loss of libido. Uh, he says his sex drive went way down after eating. Um, that's uh, not what game game changers told me. Yeah, right. I know they said you'd get more boners <laughs> from it. It's not true. <laughs> Massive boners. Yeah, he says he he says that he his his sex drive went down. Now here's the thing with stuff like this that I don't like. They didn't really control macros. I would have loved to have seen the diets being compared, but being exactly the same calories, exactly the same macros, but they didn't do that. They just tried to eat healthy and one guy ate meat and the other guy just ate, you know, vegan. Mm. But the sex drive loss, that's interesting. That could also though come from a low low calorie. I don't know. Adam, when you would diet for yeah. a show, how was your libido? Oh, terrible when you get towards, especially towards the end. Yeah. When you start yeah. getting a really low calorie. So it's, and it doesn't matter, right? So even if I was eating a, a balanced diet, just, I think, low, low calorie, especially for an extended period of time, does that to anyone's libido. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure that had something to do with just the, the fact that it was low calorie, right? Yeah. So anyway, actually, the guy who ate meat get put on 10 pounds of muscle, and the other guy didn't. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah. That's interesting. I think it had to do more of the calories. But Did you see the – someone tagged, I think, all three of us this morning. And it's some some guy, some guy from Norway who was like a you know in social fitness influencer guy who's got like, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand followers. Mm. And he's gained most of his following because he's a you know buff fitness guy that's a vegan. Mm -hmm. And he just came out and announced that he's no longer going to be vegan anymore. I saw that. And just people oh, – oh, my goodness. I'm sure he got this, roasted. Oh, they just were so angry. Yeah, they, yeah. Fake. You're a fake vegan. It was for his health. Yeah. yeah. He, he started eating meat again because there were certain nutrient deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a there was a big meta analysis that showed um, higher instances of uh, of mental illness, uh, anxiety um, disorders with people when they stop eating meat, and this has to do with the potential nutrient deficiencies. But you know, here's the thing: uh, it's we're, we're modern times. You can supplement with a lot of that stuff. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So if you're gonna go vegan and yeah, you're afraid pain in the ass, of well, I mean, you supplement anyway. You know, you're taking vitamin D. So am I. One thing. Yeah. Well, no, I take more than that. <laughs> yeah, you do. You, you guys Look know at this that. This guy over here with his purse. Yeah. He's got a purse full of supplements. <laughs> it's it's fun. Yeah. You yeah. never know what you're, you're gonna, gonna get. Go. Yeah, you in know? your Lulu bag. Yeah. 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 Uh, Justin, you had a joke. <laughs> you want to say what? No, I don't. Oh, you did. I, 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 I don't. I already wanted to move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, uh, I'm sorry. What's yeah. ass squatchers? By the oh, way. Oh, ass squatchers. I'm glad you asked, Sal. Um, <laughs> the, dude, this is like my favorite thing on the internet right now. I, I had no idea. Like, what? so the, uh, there's people out there now, like taxidermists that are taking, uh, deer butts and they're turning them into like Sasquatch looking faces <laughs> that people are putting up on their walls. I'm totally going to put this in my story just, what? just so you know. Uh, yeah, they, they look like they, they put little faces on them, little like angry, like, you know, they look like, uh, the, you know, Harry and the Henderson, like faces, but they put on, on a deer's ass. So it's just the butt. <laughs> It's a and, butt that they hang on a wall, and it looks like you know this. this do you actually feel smarter after reading all these articles, or, no? <laughs> does, it, or does it kill brain cells? This is way better than all this other bullshit everybody's yeah, like posting. That's fair. So, that yeah, is yeah, fair. I'm come with, at me. I'm with yeah. you. On oh that. my god! Yeah. What yeah. in the? Oh my god! Look at that! Look at that! That looks so good. I uh, just just do yourself a favor and Google it, okay? And so you'll it's see ass, why I'm interested. It's ass squatches. Ass squatches. Ass squatches. I want one of those in my house. I think it's uh, you know, it's 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 cute. Two, I would be two hundred and sixty five dollars for that thing. <laughs> wow. I'd be afraid to 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 Google that if I was listening right now. Yes. Ass squatches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could pull some other Crazy yeah, shit. there would be some, yeah. some, yeah, yeah. What is a uh, uh, Bill and Ted? Is that coming out? What's yeah, the deal so, with that? Uh, okay. the, I've, I've, that? I brought this up like maybe three times now. I think they've been like trying to figure out when they're going to launch it, and then this happened all. Um, and so they just put out a trailer recently. I don't, you guys haven't seen it yet. No, okay, it's, it's a real thing. So it's coming out. Like it, it's, uh, the, I mean, they're still trying to create the the ultimate song that's going to bring everybody together. Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that's. 
that's I guess the premise of it. But it's funny because they're basically going into into the future and all this, finding themselves and trying to to steal them the 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 perfect song that they've created in the future from themselves. And they're like they're they're in prison for one of them. All like these these buff suits and stuff. Anyways, it looks ridiculous and right up my alley. Dude, when's the last time you guys watched the original Bill and Ted? I'm gonna watch it this weekend with my kids. Oh, actually, you probably can't. It's ah, it's about as it's about yeah, as right. it's about as politically incorrect as you can get. But that's why I like it. Yeah, oh, is good. it really? Oh, dude, yeah, I don't remember oh, bro. when they hug. Oh, yeah. they say oh, the F word. Oh, oh yeah. bro, all movies from that era were just they just would not fly today. Uh, back yeah. when we had great television, it was, <laughs> it was fun, fun times. <laughs> now we, now Paw Patrol doesn't even fly. Paw Patrol. Oh my gosh, too dude. controversial. Yeah, did you guys hear about that? Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. people were calling for the for the removal of Paw Patrol <laughs> because yeah. it has a police dog, you know, cartoon. Dude, this is, asshole getting, police this is getting ridiculous, yeah, dude. dude. Yeah. It's such a positive cartoon. Yeah, yeah, and it's it a cartoon, Paw too. Patrol. Paw, Paw Patrol. Patrol. I remember that like it was yesterday. Yeah, there's some weird, there's there's way worse stuff in media. Why are we getting rid of that? I kind don't of know, stuff? dude. It's just it's just getting silly. What was the other thing I saw that was seemed ridiculous too? Didn't uh Portland like box off an area like Oh or, Seattle. Or yeah, right? Dude, oh. that's crazy. That's real. Now I don't yeah, know how crazy. to interpret it. I don't know if they're actually I know I I've read the articles and apparently they've sh they've they've barricaded it and they've declared it a police free zone. Now how do you do that? How does that how do you, how do we declare this is police free? Well, so what happened was the protesters gathered in mass and there were some violent confrontations and the cops were told to stand down to prevent any further violence. So they left. So then they got barricades, put them out, and said, "This is ours now." Yeah, and I mean, people live there, businesses are there. There's some anecdotal reports of people needing to show these whoever these people are their IDs to get to their own house in their own houses. I don't know, man. It's kind of crazy. I got dude. something that I learned today that I didn't know was true. So you know, if you were one of the shops that just decided to board up your windows by yourself, that you could void your insurance. How? Because it supposedly you can't. You have to frame it out, and like there's companies that were actually doing that that you'd pay like I think it was like expensive thousands of dollars to come do. It. You couldn't just throw plywood up on your store. I mean, you could, but if you did that, you potentially void the insurance. Like if you had flood or something else like that, because you were nailing oh. nailing into the the wall, the windows, the frame of the windows and stuff like that, it could void your your insurance. Really? Yeah, that's what I heard. Wow. Isn't that weird? Mm. Wow. I don't know. You know, it's cheaper than ten thousand dollars. Mm. A rifle. That you could stand in front of your business with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It you is. can keep walking. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Crazy times, weird Anyways. stuff. But yeah. So we'll, anyway, anyway, we'll see what happens in Seattle. I don't know what that, that thing's all about. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm. First question is from N. Jennings Double Zero. I have trouble activating my chest, even with common chest activation exercises. After benching with barbells and dumbbells, I always seem to feel my triceps the most. What do you recommend? Maps Prime. Yeah, there you go. One of one of the mo one of the mo the undersung or or you know not well represented benefits of priming, besides moving better and getting better ranges of motion and better connection and being stronger, is that you get to you can feel and thus work weak body parts better. So here I'm going to give you a generic way to prime your chest before you chest press, so that you start to feel your chest more. A basic fly will do this. So you do a basic fly, really squeeze the chest, isolate it, do a few sets, then go bench press, and now try to continue to feel the chest through the movement, and you'll start to feel the chest actually work. You know, I'll, I'll take that one step further. I would, I would actually row first, right, to oh. prime your back to get you because normally, if someone's feeling their triceps and or shoulders and not their chest, yeah. they're rolled forward. Right, so your, your your shoulders are rolled forward, and the triceps your, and the shoulders are taking over the movement, and you're not feeling it in the chest, and that's that's partly because you're not keeping yourself in a, a retracted position, so the chest can activate and do most of the movement. So I would prime the back first by doing you know a set of you know seated row, or even some barbell rows, real light, just you know two sets of it, 15, 20 reps, get a little bit of pump in your back. Uh, and then go do some flies, uh, like Sal is saying, and then go into a bench press. You should you should definitely feel. But I mean, this is again, uh, this is why we created Prime. I mean, mm -hmm. Prime is is designed for to address things like this because this is common. It's not uncommon. In fact, it's more common that people don't say anything about it, but they have this issue. So uh, I've seen it all the time with clients. Yeah, the whole it's it's interesting, right? Because the, the compound movements are the best muscle builders, but they're also the ones that could potentially lead to disconnection. Uh, from target body parts, right? So like a barbell squat, great exercise for the butt, 
the quads, the hamstrings. It's just phenomenal. It's one of the best, like for example, it's one of the best butt building exercises you could do. But if you have trouble connecting to your butt, it becomes a terrible mm. butt developing exercise. Um, this is where the isolation movements really come into play and you can use them at the beginning of the workout. And here's what happens. Now, I know there's a lot of uh, fitness academics out there that like to debate this and say, you're not activating more muscles and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that, the point is to get the person to feel Feel what it feels like to activate that muscle. That's what priming really does is it gets you to understand what that feels like. Then you go into your compound movement and then what you end up doing is as you do the compound movement, you focus on still continuing to feel uh, that target muscle. It, it may mean you need to go lighter, by the way. You may have to go into your bench press or your dumbbell press, drop the load by a significant amount, uh, not a little bit, by 30% maybe, slow down, and then press in a way that you feel more in your chest, if that makes sense. So one thing you could do, like let's say you're grabbing the barbell and you're doing your bench press, elbows are going to flare out a little bit more, of course, shoulders pinned down and back, and then focus, rather than pushing the bar up, focus on the elbows coming together. Because that's what the chest is doing. It's bringing the yeah. elbows together. Well, I think, too, sometimes it might be a depth issue, like especially with squats. Like you notice like a lot of people don't feel a uh, real activation in their glutes until they even like pursue more depth. And, and they're able to allowing themselves. So same with the bench. Like I, I've seen guys bench where they, they don't even go necessarily. They go about halfway down and they're just like focused completely on the lockout, which d drives all uh, tricep activity. So it, there's just that that's a part of the lift. If you can gain a little bit more depth and be able to dig your way out, you'll get more chest activity. Next question is from Rolando Chavez two. What exercises do you recommend for an overall improvement of strength endurance? Which maps program do you think works best to increase strength endurance? So, all, yeah, so the, the second, Strong. well, okay, so you can oh, you build strength again. endurance with any exercise so long as it's programmed uh, to be a strength endurance type exercise. I'll answer the second part first, then we'll go back to what I was just talking about. Um, a lot of our programs work on and develop this. More uh, mm -hmm. some Our athletic-based program, Math Performance is a good example. The program that's on sale this month is also great for strength oh, endurance. Hit. Math's hit. Yeah. Uh, High-intensity interval training done with weights actually works a lot on strength endurance. Because you're lifting weights and because of the way that we wrote the program, you are building endurance, but you're also building strength. And we did that on purpose, right? We wanted you to, to burn as many calories as possible in a short, intense workout, but we also wanted to prevent muscle loss. So there's a very strong strength component in there. Now, as far as strength in endurance is concerned, higher reps, lower rest periods works on this. Now, how low are the rest periods? You can you can bring them as far down as no rest period and go from one exercise to another, in which case you're going to do more endurance. You can have a little bit longer rest periods, like 20 or 30 seconds in between sets, in which case you're going to get a little bit more strength than endurance. So you want to look at, you know, imagine like you see a scale. If endurance goes up with your programming, then strength tends to go down and vice versa. They tend to not, you can't go hardcore strength with your program and hardcore endurance at the same time because your body will give you a little bit of each. So it's the higher reps, it's the shorter rest periods, and you can do that with almost any exercise. As you become advanced, the compound movements tend to be some of the best ones. I'll tell you what, um, you try doing 20 rep sets of squats. You don't even have to do any other exercises. Just try doing 20 reps of squats uh, with deep breathing in between and tell me you're not working. Oh, you know, tons gas of endurance. you out real quick. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Next question is from Linzeman. Am I too old to get into powerlifting? Nope. Next question. <laughs> yeah. You know, training for um, maximal strength, uh, there's a higher – anytime you're training for maximum performance in any category, there's a higher risk of injury. But if you do it right, uh, powerlifting can be appropriate for anybody, regardless of age. It depends on the individual. Well, I do want to know how old this individual is, just out of curiosity. Because, I mean, I've I've taught somebody with like that was like 60 years old how to basically – 
do those types of compound lifts that that are in our powerlifting program, but not necessarily like maxing out or like it's just really learning the technique of it first. And uh, I think that's beneficial for any age. Uh, it's just all a matter of application. Well, I look think. how old Doug is. Doug does powerlifting moves, you know, so all the time. So <laughs> there's an example right there of someone older than dirt that actually. Oh does my gosh! Wow. <laughs> so yeah. no, I, I, still I, getting gains. Well, I think I think too when we hear powerlifting, I think people just assume that it has to be like you know five, competition. Yeah, yeah, competition, five hundred, seven hundred pounds. Like you could be lifting a hundred pounds, and that could be a powerlifting for you. You know, so it doesn't necessarily mean. Uh, you, you do what is 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 a heavy load for you and and train some of the base. They're just the core lifts, right? That you're focusing on improving. I think it has a tremendous amount of value. In fact, I wish uh, I wish I understood powerlifting principles at a younger age and would have gotten into it earlier because I think that had I done that early, it would have probably carried over into my you know the, my aesthetics and building muscle uh, later on that I cared more about. The prerequisites definitely apply. I mean, like if you if you build your way up, to, it's 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 at it's at a higher tier in terms of like uh, like what you're going to try and like set a goal to get to uh, is, is how I would look at it if you're you know getting up there in age. But do you guys remember that little old lady that was the power lifter that like uh, had a home invasion and then threw the guy down? Oh, Oh, yeah, and then like pinned him, and the cops came, like yeah. like shit, like that. Like I just love to see that, and I love to see you know people that uh, are still after it and really you know like challenging themselves physically and, and what that can still provide. Well, one of the best ways for you to preserve muscle as you get older would be training this way. Ab absolutely, I so I trained a lot of people in advanced age, and, the, and when it was appropriate, I trained them. I would go through phases of heavy strength training, three reps, four reps. I would even do singles when it was appropriate. Here's the thing. Training a particular way, there are prerequisites that determine whether or not it's appropriate. Age only only is a factor because it could potentially contribute to the other prerequisites. So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, you need to have a certain amount of mobility and stability before I'm going to train you uh, with heavy loads. Um, can age influence that? It can, but age by itself doesn't matter. You know, I can train somebody, and I have, train somebody who's in their 70s, who has excellent stability and mobility, um, who I would train heavy all the time. My old client, Jim, who actually helped Doug and I film the first MAPS anabolic program, we used to do singles and doubles and triples all the time. He was in his 70s, extremely fit, extremely strong, a, a tremendous amount of muscle on his on his body, and he was a, a, what you would consider an ectomorph. I mean, the guy got his testosterone levels checked, and he was always in the six to 700 range, um, and it was just appropriate. So- Powerlifting is appropriate when it's appropriate. Well, it's also the yeah. other end of the spectrum is true too. Like I've had clients that I've trained that are 25 years old that have no business powerlifting because right. they have incredibly ter terrible posture. They have no stability and they just don't have good mechanics. So they're not somebody who I would want to load, you know, a squat, a deadlift, an overhead press or a, a chest press really, really heavy until I addressed all those things. So you're right. Age doesn't really have anything to do with it. It really depends on where, you, where you're currently at in your, in your fitness in, career. In the old old adage, you, you use it or you lose it, is very, very true. What does that mean? That means if you stop practicing something or you stop doing something, you lose the ability to do that. Um, so, you know, in an extreme example, if you were to lay in bed for the next 10 or 15 years, your ability to walk would probably uh, be gone or it would be significantly hampered. You would, you would have a very tough time getting up and walking after laying in bed that long. If as you get older, if you lose the ability to exert, you know, strength through a, you know, maximal strength, right? You lose the ability to lift a heavy load for two or three reps. Um, you'll lose it because you don't practice it. Could that be a skill that's valuable to somebody in that age group? Absolutely. You know, if you want to remain independent through old age, that means that, you know, you may need to move the couch on your own or the kitchen table or a chair or lift heavy, heavy groceries. So this is a skill you don't want to lose. You just got to be careful and you got to do it uh, the right way. But if it's done properly, and here's the wonderful thing about resistance training. If it's done properly and if it's appropriate, it's always a good idea. If those two things are met, then it's always a good idea, regardless of age. Next question is from that guy T. How would you advise someone with body dysmorphia and a long history of dieting to repair a broken relationship with food? 
Man, um, you know, first off, I want to say uh, if you're a trainer, and we were all trainers, I, I, we all have a lot of experience working with this kind of stuff, but I would always, if this was a bad situation, I would always uh, recommend that they also work with an expert uh, in this in this type of field, like eating disorder expert. Mm -hmm. So I've worked with clients who both worked with a counselor or a therapist and then also trained with me. Now, the way that I would help them as a trainer, one of the most successful strategies I ever found that helped people with body dysmorphia was to take their focus off of how their body looked and get them to focus on performance. Yeah. And it's not a permanent solution because you could also go, you know, you could also get, uh, you know, a little pathological, which is performance. Right. But if you take someone that all they care about is how they look and they obsess about it, and I could ch shift their focus and, and get them to care more about how strong I am, uh, my mobility, how much stamina and endurance I have, it gets their mind off of the how they look uh, all the time. And it's actually was quite successful. I've had several clients that, you know, I've done that with alongside working with a therapist and it was tremendously I think successful. That's the, I think that's a must. I think you yeah. have to have, I mean, even with all of our experience with uh, clients like this, which I have too, uh, I, I would want a, a nutritionist, a therapist, and then me, right? And then all I'm focused on is programming. I'm focused on programming and keeping your mind focused on increasing weights. Strength, 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 strength. That's mm -hmm. all we're talking about, mm -hmm. not about what your body looks like. I don't even want to dive into your calories up or down. I'd rather your nutritionist talk to you about feeding your body, getting it what it needs, and speaking to you about that, your therapist working through your, your body dysmorphia, and then me focusing you on your strength training. I know that sounds crazy because I'm sure not everybody can afford – all three of those, but the reality is that you know this is a, a multifaceted type of situation that I don't want to think that uh, I have the expertise to handle it all on my own, even if I have experience dealing with it. Yeah. And I think our all of our experiences have led us to you know this person. The worst thing you could do is talk about aesthetics and and looking a certain way or trying to change that or the scale. And and and, that, and the, honestly, even if you don't have dysmorphia, right? Even if you're not somebody who's got this extreme case. This is a strategy that we use with almost everybody. Right? Anyway, yeah. yeah, because even even somebody who is not on this far into the spectrum that falls somewhere, just you know, they're concerned about their weight or they want to do this. Like, it's a good strategy for trainers to get away from the scale and get away from the way they look all the time. I think there's enough of that with social media mm -hmm. and magazines and television telling us that we need to look a certain way. That most people that come in, uh, I, I try to steer away from that way no matter what. It's a psychological relief, and I and I I, I definitely was big on this in the, in the initial bit is really trying to focus in on how well your body's functioning, how well you feel, how well the joints move. You know what kind of strength gains we're we're getting. You know week after week. Uh, and, and really like the, the, the whole aesthetic side of it was something that I would address, you know, as it, you know, as it came up on checkpoints. But, uh, for the most part, like I, I just find it such a better strategy to get people to really get excited about, um, you, you know, actually being able to move better being able to be stronger. It, it's more empowering, uh, than to, to really just kind of look at yourself and being like, I, cause it's so temporary. Like you're, you're never going to be like super happy that, at that second. It's always when you're looking back at like how happy you were, how good you looked at that moment. Yeah. And I think it's also important to communicate that the, the standard, uh, the standard way of doing business or working with clients can actually be quite negative uh, for people with body dysmorphia. So what do I mean by that? Well, typically what trainers do is we take circumference measurements. Uh, we look at the scale. We'll do body fat percentage tests. The verbiage that we use, shape and sculpt your body. You know, where would you like to build? Where would you like to lose? What part of your body do you want to focus on? Um, that kind of talk is terrible. It's toxic for somebody who has uh, body dysmorphia issues. Um, I'm also going to say this statement, which I think is true. A lot of trainers suffer from mild forms of body dysmorphia. Mm. It's probably why you got into fitness in the first place. I know yeah. it was for me, so I'm speaking from personal experience. So the thing that you want to be, you know, more than what you want to do, it's really about what you want to avoid. I would not talk about what parts of your body you want to focus on in terms of looks. I would not do body fat tests. I would not look at the scale or do cir circumference and use those metrics uh, to gauge a client's success. All I would focus on, all I would focus on was performance 
in the gym, how strong you are, how you feel. And I would also create a light environment. You know, like I said, I've worked with several clients where I would work with their therapist. And this is something that I think, uh, if you're a trainer, can make you extremely valuable. Get the names and numbers of the other practitioners that your client is working with and work with them. You could be very, very effective if you do that. And so a lot of times I talk to the therapist and I'd say, hey, here's what I'm doing. What do you think? And then usually the therapist would agree. Sometimes they'd say something like, hey, if you could keep the conversation kind of light in the workout because stress is, tends to trigger so-and-so. Um, and of course, this is all the, with the permission of the, of the client. And then that's what I do. I would work them out and we wouldn't even talk about performance. We would just work out and have good conversation and just create an environment where the person could connect to their body with no outside pressure or focus and really start to learn how to feel their body differently. Because I think when you have body dysmorphia, your connection to your body obviously is, is not uh, healthy. It's not accurate. But exercise itself is, can be a very healthy way to connect to your body. You can feel your body moving. You can feel muscles get sore. You can feel things stretching. And so if you don't layer it with a bunch of here's what's happening with your body, here's what we're doing, and we're just in there in this kind of comfortable, like, let's just do this together type of thing, they start to actually develop uh, better uh, associations and connections to their body. One of the people that I worked with um, years ago who I'm talking about became a personal trainer. Uh, they had such a positive experience, were able to solve uh, this issue with themselves that they quit their job and, and went into fitness because it was that you know positively impactful. Uh, but again, remember, uh, if you're a trainer, uh, focus on uh, what you know. Stay in your lane mm -hmm. uh, and work with the other practitioners who are experts uh, on this particular subject. Uh, and with that, look, Mind Pump is also video recorded. So if you want to watch Mind Pump and not just listen to Mind Pump, go to the Mind Pump Podcast YouTube channel. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Doug is at Mind Pump Doug. Justin's at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. And then you can find me at Mind Pump Sal.